Alright guys, so this lecture is going to be about doing studies. Um, and by studies what I mean is uh, the practice of drawing something with the intent of understanding how it works, its form, um, its anatomy, just how to draw it, right? So studies you don't, I mean they're not typically for portfolio use or for any sort of project. They're mainly for you to help get better at doing whatever it is you're studying. So. When you're designing creatures, it's a really good idea to study real life animals because understanding how they move, what they look like when they're you know, in flight or sitting down or whatever it is, can really help bring a lot of reality and believability to your creature designs. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I do when I'm doing a study of something. And then your assignment will be to also do a study and Really, if you really want to be a good creature designer, the secret is to do these every day. Do at least one study a day with a couple drawings of whatever it is you're doing a study of, and you will be amazed at how quickly you improve. So um, let's go ahead and start out with this guy here. So we have this hawk, and things we're focusing on here, we're not making this a highly rendered drawing. This is just gonna be a sketch that really gets across the anatomical information we need to understand. So we're talking about the pose, uh, the surface anatomy, the form, and then as well as another really important one is the fur or feather direction or scale direction, whatever it is you're drawing. But how do the feathers or fur lay on the body? What direction do they flow? Um, what's their weight like? You know, That's the kind of thing that we're really trying to focus on here. So I'm going to start out here. And I'm going to move this up here to the corner so I can see better. Okay. And I'm going to start, uh, I'm just going to start with the branch actually. So let's bring that in here. Okay, so now that I got this branch sketched in here, what I'm going to do next is try and figure out kind of the overall shapes of this bird. So um, he has one foot on the branch down here, and then from there we kind of have this oval shape that makes up the rest of his body, maybe more like a upside down tear shape kind of. Okay. And then off the front of that, we have like his neck and then his head. And then right here we have his leg, which comes off and makes this shape and his foot coming out. Down here is his tail feathers. Okay. And then his wings come out from about here. This is especially great, uh, this idea of doing studies. It really helps you get more believable poses in your, in your creature design. Because a lot of times, we tend to just draw them either standing there or uh, from a side view or a front view. When in reality, real life, it's rarely like that. You rarely see an animal just standing there perfectly posed still. They're doing something or they're relaxing, you know? And another thing is sometimes we tend to uh, create our creatures doing these, you know, like snarling or doing all these things when uh, really most animals most of the time aren't doing that. And I'm, this, it's interesting to draw things being aggressive and snarling, but it's also can be really interesting to be able to see what this creature looks like in, you know, like his natural habitat. What does this creature do in his leisure time when he's not fighting something? He's just kind of, you know, relaxing, chilling, doing his thing. And the only way you can really get a good understanding of that is by doing these studies, seeing what real animals do when they're like that. All right, so let's sketch in the shape of this wing here. And you can see right now at this point, I'm not drawing every single individual feather. Um, what I'm really focusing on is the overall shapes and the structures, right? So if I break these feather shapes down um, into kind of sections, 
I can see where uh, the different you know parts of the wing are. So for example we have this section right here is one section this up here is going to be another section we have this section here and then the rest of the feathers kind of fall down here. Alright, that's looking pretty good so far. Um, I think though, I'm looking at this and I feel like uh, this whole wing needs to be longer and also move a little bit lower. So let's move that down. Stretch it out. And we can go back in here and erase some of this so it lines up again. Okay. Cool. So we got this sketched in now. Let's really start trying to work in a little bit more of the details here and get everything lined up. So um, let's see. First we have, I'm going to start with his his head area. And I'm noticing that I made his neck and his head a little bit too long. That they should really, uh, his head is kind of a bit further down and closer to his leg. Okay, so we got that in there. Let's get his beak in here. I really want to get that beak shape right. All right, this is looking pretty good. We'll get the nostril in there. The eye. When you're drawing eyes, uh, it's really important to think of them as a 3D shape as a sphere that's set into the skull because if we're just thinking of it as a flat circle then I would be drawing the eye like this but that isn't in perspective and it doesn't look right. When we look at the drawing we can see that from the angle it's at we can only see part of it because of the shape of the eyelid. So I'm going to try and replicate that and just thinking about and realizing that it's not just a circle but it's actually a sphere. All right, it's looking pretty good. So now we have, uh, I'm just gonna kind of suggest the texture we have here of the feathers. Because once again, that's part of what we're trying to do is understand where, where, does the, where do these feathers and fur lie on its body. So, You'll notice I go back and forth quite a bit to different parts because I'm constantly trying to scan the image and see what needs to be reworked and what's not quite accurate. And I notice that his eye is just a little bit too small and not quite at the right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and move that until I feel like it is. And I think that looks a lot better. So let's work on this wing now. comes up, we have these feathers that are sticking out from this area. Sometimes when I'm drawing I, and I'm talking I tend to get like really quiet because I get into it. Uh, so I apologize for that. You guys should still be able to hear me fine and I'll make sure I adjust the volume but it's just something I noticed and I think it's funny I get like really, it's almost like reverent, like I'm really really serious about this it's so so magical all right so the angle that we're looking at the wing from here it's almost flat and you can barely see any of it but there is still a little bit of a form to it it still has some volume so I'm really gonna try and make sure that I hit that when I draw this edge here and then it comes up all right, looks pretty good for that wing, and let's uh, make suggest some of the black tips we have going on in there. Okay, so we got that. Uh, the next thing I want to work on, well, I noticed here that this kind of neck part is a little bit too crazy. 
So I'm gonna just tone it down a little bit. That looks better. And uh, then let's work, move on to this next part, kind of this feathery area uh, by his leg. And it's really interesting, you know, a lot of times when we, if we're just drawing birds out of our head and we're not looking at reference, sometimes we can have the tendency to draw every single feather and uh, we end up making the whole entire thing look like it's covered in like scales or like chain mail, like a knight would wear or something. And uh, when we're looking at this reference image here, we can kind of see that's not really the case, especially on his body. A lot of his feathers kind of blend into what looks like one smooth mass, you know, it almost looks like really soft fur. And if we were drawing every single feather, uh, one, it would get really distracting, but two, we would really start to miss that, that texture that we see here, which is kind of a big part of this bird. So we really want to be sure that we're not just drawing what we think we see, you know, just letting our brain fill in uh, different things because it's telling us, oh, I know that's a bird, so therefore there must be feathers everywhere, so I'm going to draw every feather, right? Our brain might know that, but what our eyes are seeing is not the same thing. When we look at this, we don't see a bunch of feathers everywhere. Um, we see a few feathers in the wings, and you can see some defined shapes, but for the most part on its body, that's not the case. We don't see all those feathers. And so when you're drawing it and you're trying to make it look realistic and believable, don't draw all the time what your brain is telling you it sees. Instead, draw what your eyes are seeing, right? That way, when other people look at it, their eyes, when they're looking at your drawing, will be seeing what your eyes saw when you draw it instead of kind of like this... Uh, artificial symbol language that we come up with in our minds to describe uh, different features. All right, so let's move on. Um, I'm going to start working this other wing up here now. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I feel like it's not quite laying in perspective. I'll come back to it later. And this shape also, shape of his wing, is not quite right. Okay. So we can see that there's this shape that comes up here. Shape of this section of feathers. And comes down like that. And then we have this section of feathers here. These are another section and then we have the last part here. And then this is where we can start to draw in the individual feathers. All right. So, we really want to focus on these shapes, right? Because when we're later when we're drawing a wing, we can look at it and know you know where these basic shapes lie right we know that there's something like this instead of just trying to guess and figure it out by doing these studies it will help us learn these shapes and forms way better so that we can build up like this mental library of images because we can get to a point where um, if we've studied it enough we don't need to use reference as much because the reference we're using is in our brain, right? We've memorized our reference photos by drawing them so much, which is the point you want to get at. That's the point of doing these studies so that every time you draw a creature, you don't have to go look up a picture for everything, but you just kind of have built up this understanding of what it's like on different parts of the body and what different textures look like and feel like. And so by doing these studies, that's what's going to help you build up that mental library. So I'm going to be sure later, after I finish getting most of the form down, to go back in and add some of these spots that are on the bird. Um, and the reason why is because even though we're not focusing too much on detail um, and getting, you know, we're not going to render this or paint it or anything. However, those spots are part of what helps identify the form, right? The way that they're laying on the bird helps us see what direction 
that form is facing and how it's falling either away from us or towards us. And then also, uh, it also helps build up our mental library of what types of you know patterns and designs we want to put on our creatures, because that's another element of creature design is you know what does their color look like, what kind of patterns do they have. Okay, and then I'm going to come back in with my eraser tool and uh, bring it down really small and just hit the edges of these feathers because they have white tips on the very end. And that's what helps us see their shape better. Okay. Looking pretty good so far. Um, and let's move on to its back now and the kind of the, the rest of his body. You really don't want to be spending probably more than, oh, 20 minutes uh, on a study. And the faster you can get to the point where you can, uh, while still, you know, still maintaining the quality, because we're not trying to make a finished masterpiece. We just want to understand the form right, and the different aspects of it, while at the same time not rushing through it, right? We don't want this really sloppy sketch. We want it to be a, a study. But at the same time, this isn't a masterpiece, right? This isn't something we're going to be showing off in our portfolio or anything like that. We just want to get the idea out as quickly and as simply as possible while still capturing all the detail. If if it takes you an hour to do a study, you know what, that's that's fine. Try and get your speed up a little bit, but um, if that's what it takes for you to really capture what you're looking for in the image, then go for it. You know, Take all the time you need, uh, but just make sure that you're not trying to make this some masterpiece that you're gonna be showing off to any you know art directors or sticking your portfolio, because this is just prep work uh, to get to the point where you can make the type of images that you'll be able to put in your portfolio. This is how you get good enough for art directors to look at your work and not just brush you off. So we got this shape of the tail in here. And then now let's do the feathers. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to start to go in the last part and run in some of these details that I'm seeing, these patterns. I notice over here on his wings, um, it kind of goes up a ways and it leaves these little circle type shapes behind in the wings. I'm going to go back in with the eraser tool and add that. So working my way up his wing, getting these spots in, and the next thing I'm going to do is uh, to just suggest some of the shadow and the lighting to help me see where its form is and the shape of its body. And when I'm doing these little patterns and these specs, I'm not copying every single one from the picture. I'm just trying to get the gist of it. But you can see on certain parts, depending on how they fall, they get thinner and closer together. And that's because it's turning away from us. When it's facing us, we see the full shape. It's not contorted in any way. Um, there's no perspective to it. But as it turns away from us, it begins to mash the shape a little bit more and change that. And so by keeping that in mind, and adding that to where it is being distorted, it'll help define the form of the bird or whatever else it is you're drawing. Maybe you're drawing like a leopard or a tiger or something. Keeping in mind that as that surface turns away from you, that's going to distort and stretch and skew those patterns because they're wrapping around the form instead of just lying flat and facing the viewer. So be sure to keep that in mind. If you don't, and you just kind of draw them on there evenly across the whole thing, it's going to make your drawing look really flat and it's going to look fake and feel kind of weird. And uh, a lot of times you can't tell why. I mean, the patterns look the same, right? I mean, I drew them, I drew the stripes, I drew the spots, but it's because they're not following the form of the creature. So in order to make sure that it doesn't look like that, you got to pay attention to that and make sure that it makes sense. 
So for example, once it gets up here, the dots become really small and get pretty close together. And it's because it's wrapping around the wings, so you can't see the whole thing. All right, so let's hurry up and quickly add the rest of these spots on his back so we can get to the shadows that we wanted to add. And then the little bit that we see on the top of his wing here. Yeah, there's a few little specks in here. And that looks about good. So uh, let's finish up by just suggesting some of these shadows. Down in here. His leg. Once again, I'm not doing any crazy detailed rendering. I'm just trying to suggest uh, this part is getting hit by light and this part isn't. This whole thing is in shadow. This side is all in shadow. And and when I'm shading, just something to to keep in mind, you kind of want to try and follow the uh, the direction that the form is going. So if the feathers are all going in one direction, you're shading. You want to go in that same direction. Okay. And I just realized, looking at this, we forgot to draw his back leg. So let's put that in there really quick. It's pretty pretty dark back there, so we don't need to go into a bunch of crazy detail on it. But All right, excellent. And then throw in some really rough, quick shadow on the branch just to indicate some form. And I'd say that's that's good for this one. So I'm going to do one more in the next lecture um, and then we'll move on to the final assignment for this section. So uh, part two of the study demo, I'm going to do one more and we're going to do this bird right here because um, it allows me to see what its shape is like from a resting state. It also allows me to get a good idea of uh, how the feathers lie on its back and it's just a good angle, a good pose um, to be able to draw it from. So um, this is the one I'm going to use. When you're doing a study, a, a good rule of thumb, I'm only going to do two for this demo, um, but I would do probably four, five, maybe even six studies of the same creature, whatever it is you're doing, to really get a good handle on it. And try and vary up the poses, the angles, um, the positions so that you can get a good grasp. Don't draw six pictures of a bird in flight in the exact same pose. You're not really going to learn a lot from it. So try and vary it up. So anyways, that being said, let's move forward with this one. So once again, we're going to start out the same way as we did last time. I'm going to make sure that I'm on my drawing layer. And I'm going to start blocking out the shape. Okay. So let's start with his body, which it is kind of a almost like a vague heart shape is what we're working with okay and right now just like before we're only focusing on the overall shape we're not worrying about uh, the patterns or any details we're only focusing on the shape Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the head. And uh, just like I did in the last one, you'll notice that uh, as I go throughout the drawing, I'm constantly moving my eyes over the whole thing so I can go back and change anything that I notice. Uh, seems a little bit off, right? Um, I'm constantly comparing my drawing to the reference photo and you really should be actually spending most of your time looking at the reference photo instead of looking at your drawing if you notice that your eyes are spending most of their time on your drawing you're probably doing it wrong um, you want to be constantly comparing and looking at the reference photo to see where you might be off a little bit or where you need to adjust um, and your drawing is kind of should be almost like an afterthought to the uh, the amount of time you spend looking at the reference photo. Okay, 
So we got the uh, the general shape down for his body so far. Okay. And then let's snail these wings really quick. Okay, working on his tail now. And uh, I'm not gonna draw every single individual feather yet. I'm just trying to get the shape, all right? Because any drawing that we do for our creature design, it's gonna start with a shape, right? We don't just go right into uh, drawing it and start working all these details, you know? If we do that, we're gonna really lose the basis of what it is we're trying to accomplish. And so we really wanna focus with the shape and try to visualize and understand the anatomy of it. Okay, so I feel like he's a little bit too big. I'm just gonna scale him down on my page. And then I also feel like the tail is, well, his body feels a little bit wide, I think is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just narrow it a little bit and we can attach his tail back on there. Perfect. And his tail also seems maybe a little big, so we can bring it down in size. And for anyone that's not doing this digitally, <clears throat> I mean, you'll notice that I use the lasso tool quite a bit to, you know, get the proportions right and rescale things. And that's not really something you can do very easily if you're doing it traditionally with a paper and pencil. In fact, you can't really just do that at all. There's no uh, magic tool where you can just select whatever part of your drawing and then make it a different size. So, but I don't want that to discourage you or make you feel like, uh, it's not possible for you um, because it totally is. Before I did digital, I only, I mean, I've only been doing digital for about a year now, a year and a half maybe. But before that, I did everything on paper and pencil, everything. Um, all of my work was traditional. And um, doing things traditionally, you can still, you know, rework things. It just means you're going to have to erase a lot and really practice making a, a accurate visual um, survey of what it is you're drawing and but there's a benefit that you have that uh, when you're doing digital you don't which is that you're really forced to pay attention a lot more and get things a lot more accurate on your first go if you don't want to have to uh, repaint the whole thing or redraw the whole thing again and so it will really take your drawing skills a lot farther a lot faster when you're having to really focus on it as opposed to digital where if something's not working you can just change it now that doesn't mean you shouldn't do digital okay I pretty much only do digital now because it's way faster um, it saves a lot of time and I like the convenience of being able to change things quickly um, so I just don't want anyone to feel like it's hopeless for them because they don't have a tablet or an iPad, which is what I'm working on. And so therefore they can, they can never, you know, do creature design well, because it's, it's just not true. Some of the best creature designers out there, um, Tara Whitlatch, for example, she's considered a master in the field of creature design and she does everything, uh, traditionally with markers and with, uh, paper and pencils and she very rarely if at all ever uses digital and she's super successful and amazing she worked on Star Wars she worked for Disney on uh, like Brother Bear stuff like that and she's she's phenomenal uh, another example is Ian McCaig he does a lot of amazing character designs creature design storyboards um, and he doesn't really do any digital either I mean he does a little bit but his drawing all of his drawing is done traditionally and then he just does some painting over in digital as like a like a last touch so if if you don't have a tablet or maybe it's hard for you to draw digitally um, it just doesn't work very well for you which some people it doesn't um, 
don't sweat it, okay? It's not a requirement. Something I'm really trying to get accurately here is the shape of his beak. Um, it really has a pretty sharp curve. It's like a hook, but I want to make sure I don't make it too thin or too thick because that beak is really one of the defining characteristics of a hawk. It's kind of one of the things that when we look at it, we can tell it's not just a normal bird, but that it's a, a predator, that it's going to use that beak to tear stuff apart. And so I'm really trying to make sure I can accurately try and capture the shape of it. All right, that's looking a little better. Let's get some of these feathers that he has fluffing out there. And another thing I'm really trying to focus on is the size of his eye in comparison to his head and just kind of where it falls on there. And I think maybe even overall what's what's wrong is that his head is too wide and I just need to kind of squash all of this back a little bit more. All right. So I think looking at the whole thing now in comparison to each other, his whole head, his whole torso, we'll start with his torso first, needs to be a little bit smaller and possibly a little bit wider. Okay. I think that looks better. And then his tail needs to be a little bit skinnier. Not so wide. All right. So I think we got our basic shapes down uh, pretty well. We're going to go ahead and move forward with what we have. And as we go, if we see stuff that we need to go back and change and clean up, we can totally do that. So I'm going to start with his head. And right off, we can see his eye is really dark. It's all the way black. Get the eyelid in there. I like how uh, hawks and like eagles, other most birds of prey, they always look like angry, like they always look like they want to kill someone um, because of the feathers they have above their eyes, which I'm, I'm sure those are for something more practical, like protecting its eyes from sunlight, but uh, I just think it's funny that they always look like mad, like his face looks like, excuse me, what did you just call me? Like he's some angry, angry little bird all the time. Same with like especially bald eagles. They look like the angriest animals in the animal kingdom. Let's get some of these patterns in here. The, the bigger shapes. Suggest some of the flow of the feathers down here on his face. Okay. Down the back of his head is has this, you know, gray spot. It will darken in a bit. And I want to make sure I'm not making too dark of lines in certain places because we don't want to suggest something that has more weight or form to it than it does. That's going to confuse us and uh, kind of mess up the point of the study. We really want to make sure that we're only, uh, only really putting these heavy lines where it's going to be either in shadow or uh, there's a pretty vivid separation between forms, right? It's okay to let certain lines blend or disappear. All right. And then back here, he has his other stripe. I think these guys look so cool. Persian falcons, they're beautiful. Alright, so now that I'm starting to paint 
these on, I'm realizing that uh, his head is overall too wide and his eyeball is too small and once I painted these stripes I could kind of start to tell where the problem was it gave me a little bit more of a reference so it's okay to go back once you've built in your your base structure to go back and change it if you need to there's nothing wrong with that that looks better I think and you know what, let's also make his head a little flatter. Make sure we size it back up. Since we messed with the dimensions, we also made it a little bit smaller and we don't want it too small. Okay, there we go. And I'd say that looks about good for where we want to take the head for now. Let's move on to another part of his body. So, we got the head. His shoulders and uh, his back up here are pretty pretty simple. There's nothing crazy. We're just going to indicate a little bit of the feather texture we have going on here to really pull out that form. Okay. Then we got uh, his wings in the back. And I'm going to get my eraser tool so I can start cleaning up some of these construction lines and we can really come in and start to define exactly where these shapes fall. So he comes in, we got this little bump that comes out. The wing, this feather comes down off the side. That's a little bit too big. Okay. And then we have his wings that come down. And let's start focusing in on this shape. Okay, and then it overlaps over here, this brown part of his feathers, we'll draw that in, okay. This looks a little bit too big, a little too prominent, so we're going to trim it down a little bit. And then his wing comes out right here. All right, it's looking good so far. Um, so we'll get these shapes in here. Starting to slowly define some of the individual feathers or at least the main clusters of them. And remember, one of the things that we're focusing on here is how do these fall against a form, right? We're not just drawing random feathers and we're not just uh, drawing what we think we see. We really got to look at this and see what direction are these feathers going? How do they, you know, foreshorten or lengthen in perspective? Um, where, um, where on the body are these stemming from? You know, we don't just want to draw a bunch of feathers like this, okay? Because that's not what the picture looks like. They overlap. They overlap in very specific ways. And that's part of the thing that we're trying to study. Because if we can take that, we can study this and kind of add it to our mental library and memorize how that works and then add it to our own creatures instead of just having uh, our own creature that has a bunch of random feathers everywhere it's gonna look like it's something from real life because we've studied how feathers overlay each other on a real bird's wing and how they overlap and lie flat and when they're extended and all those things when we draw our own creature it's gonna look real it's gonna look like wow that that seems like it could come from nature or uh, real life but if we're just trying to guess and we're trying to rush through this drawing and draw what we think we see is going on because our brain is telling us, oh, this is a bird. So clearly there's feathers everywhere, so I'm going to draw feathers everywhere. Uh, it's just not the case, right? Don't let your brain go crazy and get away from you. You're, you're in control. Let your eyes tell you what to draw and really, really keep looking at the reference photo, okay? That's the most important thing to be studying 
uh, not your not your drawing so much. You constantly want to be going back and forth and making comparisons and changes as you go. All right, so let's get this other wing in here. All right, that's looking pretty good. And let's work on the tail now. Bring this out here. Even though in the picture these his tail feathers are kind of folded against this bush. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to draw them as if they're straight because I don't want to have to draw the the bush like that. I just want to be able to see the feathers, how they are. All right. And then I'm going to I'm going to flare it out a little bit more at the bottom cuz it's seeming a little bit uh a little bit narrow. All right, that's looking a little better. We kind of shorten this a little too much out here, so let's bring it back out. Okay, cool. So let's go in now and start cleaning up some of this stuff in the tail. It's pretty messy down there. Perfect, and then I'm gonna draw in the shaft of these feathers on each one. All right, perfect. So we've got that in. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up each individual feather here on the back of his wings that we can see. And just sketch those in really quickly. Um, on his back, we can see a few more defined shapes. There's a lot of more of these flat edges, the, the feathers that have like a flat bottom to them down in here. Define these guys. Birds especially are a great are a great thing to study just because uh, wings, uh, they kind of tend to can be a common thing in creature design, especially if you're doing a lot of fantasy stuff, you know. Uh, you're going to be designing stuff like griffins and uh, maybe your dragon is going to have feathers instead of leathery type, you know, sort of like bat wings. Um, if that's the case, you should definitely, 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 like, can't stress it enough, you should be studying some birds so that your your wings look legitimate and they look realistic and not these flat, uh, flat representations of what a wing should be. Just do your research, you know? It takes some time, it takes a little bit of effort, but that's what's gonna take you from uh, an amateur who's just, you know, going along and doodling their uh, sketches, you know, their creature drawings to someone who is, someone who knows what they're talking about, who can take what a client wants and uh, what they have in their head and put it on paper and make it into something believable, something you could put into a film or a game. So now I'm going in here and I'm uh, adding the shadows. I've gotten to a point where I'm happy with all the feathers in my, my structure. Going in here and just placing these in where they go. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Get his tail down here. And these shadows also, man, they really, once you get these shadows in here, it really starts to bring it to life and you can really start seeing the shape that it takes, you know. Once you can start to see how the light and shadows fall on it, it really helps your eyes see where the main volumes are and the main overlying shapes of the creature are. There's another thing to keep in mind, just on a side note, this applies to any kind of art and drawing, not just creature design, but there's really two, there's, there's, I guess there could be more, but the two main types of shadow are, uh, that you want to focus on is cast shadow and then shadow that's, you know, it's just not being hit by light. So for example, um, if we're talking about like the rounded edge underneath his beak, under his neck up here, um, that's not necessarily a cast shadow, it's just not getting any light directly, right? But if we talk about, say, under here on his tail and his wings where we're working, 
that's a shadow that's being cast from his wings above. Um, it's not just the soft curve of something that eventually fades out of the light. It's being cast a shadow upon by the object above it. And being aware of that and adding it to your drawings brings a whole nother depth of reality and depth to your drawings. A lot of times, a lot of beginning artists will only focus on one or the other and it makes their drawings seem really flat. You want to focus on both and uh, use both of them in your art as you're drawing, not just one. Okay. That looks pretty good. I think we got all the shadows in there for the most part. And now let's go in for the last step and add any of the rest of the markings we're gonna add. So we're gonna do some of these ones on his back because that's where it really helps us understand uh, the form. Because we can see like I was talking earlier, as the object turns away from you, the shapes will become distorted and flattened, right? And if we just draw these as circles all over his body, it's gonna make him look really flat. He's not gonna look like he's 3D um, and we're not going to be able to tell, you know, what shape he actually is. But by drawing these in perspective and making sure we really nail that, uh, it gives us a much better idea of what shape he actually makes. Okay? Now, if you'll notice, I'm not hitting every single spot exactly how it is in the picture. I'm trying to get the overall feel and you know gist of what this is right it's not about copying the picture exactly word for word or you know image for image line for line it's about doing a study it's about understanding how it works how it you know is shaped um, how the patterns lie and work not about just copying the picture exactly how you see it um, that's not really going to help you learn anything. You're trying to study it. It's called a study for a reason because you're trying to take what you're seeing and add it into your visual library so that later at a different date you can use it and apply it to something else. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's move on to uh, these feathers down here. Okay. Looking good, he has a few little specks up here on these feathers. And then these feathers, let's go to his tail first. We'll come to his preliminary feathers last. Um, but these feathers down here, um, they get really dark at the bottom and the ones on the end, they kind of have these spots going on. The amount of, you know, colors and patterns out there in nature is, it's just amazing, really. I mean, uh, this, like, infinite possibilities of all these amazing different designs that nature has come up with to help camouflage animals or help them mate, help them be disguised. Um, and with today's day and age where we have, you know, so much access to the internet and photos online, uh, we can look at any of these and use them for reference. And we don't have to travel, you know, across the world to be able to see these things and use them for our own designs. We can just get online, you know, check it out and uh, make our creatures look like that. And that's what we want to want to be doing and if there's one thing that you could take away from this course so far and at the very end uh, it would definitely be use reference okay it's such a simple thing it's so easy and it makes your art look so much more believable and professional use reference use it well don't just copy it uh, don't be married to your reference but understand what elements to add and how to incorporate it into your drawing and it's going to take it to the next level. You can tell, especially after you start doing these studies and you get a hang for it, you'll be able to tell when you look at someone's art whether or not they use reference. You'll instantly be able to look at it and know they just made that up from their head 
they have no idea what a real feather looks like they have no idea what um animal eyes really look like whatever it is they're doing and you'll be able to tell that they've never never studied it before and that doesn't mean that your drawing needs to look just like the reference it just means that um you know what how the forms lie and what's realistic all right so it looks pretty good um i'm gonna lay in just really quickly the overall value of these feathers down here because they're not quite white they're brown a darker reddish brown okay and then kind of define the end of these feathers more so we're not left guessing they are okay and then let's do the last part which is these wings up here which are pretty dark. They're not quite black, but they're still a pretty dark gray. So we want to be sure to capture that. And then these tips of the wings that kind of have this little white edge to them, instead of trying to line that up perfectly when I'm hatching this color in, I'm just going to go back with an eraser tool and erase out a little bit of white on the edge so that I uh, don't have to spend all this time trying to catch that with my while well, I'm just trying to lay in value. Cause that's just it's gonna be hard, it's not gonna look good, it's gonna take a long time. Um be sure that you know after you post these, post these on the Facebook group. Let people see what you're working on show them uh show them what you've come up with because one of the best ways to really get better is to get feedback from people and i'm i'll be on there every day um, i'll answer any questions you guys have i'll you know be giving you feedback if you want it um i'm here to help you guys you know that's my that's my job in this um so you know Put your stuff on there. Let people see it. Um, and it's going to inspire other people too, right? Don't just keep it to yourself. Put it on there so everyone can see because uh, it'll make, when you go on there and look at stuff, it'll make you more motivated to be able to see what everyone's working on. And it'll make other people motivated. So don't be shy. So that looks good. And then I'm going to go back in with the eraser tool, like I said, and get the whites of this back to white the edges at least it's not necessarily white because my background is gray but a lighter value than everything else around it anyways and then let's do this other side so I would call that good on this one I think it turned out pretty nicely and uh it really helped really helped give us a better understanding. We'll just add some sort of a branch in here really quick. I don't want to paint all those pine needles or draw those pine needles, so I'm just going to make up my own thing here really quick cuz uh yeah, it doesn't seem like fun. Get the shadow in here of these feathers so that it feels like he's actually sitting on the branch. Cool. Sweet. That looks that looks pretty good. Um, one last thing that I like to do, I'm gonna show you guys really quick that uh, just helps me better define the silhouette and form of it, is I'll make a new layer underneath my drawing. If you're doing this uh, traditionally, you won't really be able to do this, but if you are doing it digitally, um, I like to do this to just make sure I can really see the silhouette clearly and it helps me better understand the overall shape and I'll just make a new layer underneath select a lighter tone of gray than what I have for my background and just block in the whole shape all just in one color and it just makes it really clear for me to see what the silhouette is you know what is this thing being mostly made up of shape wise it helps it set it out from the background and I think it makes it look nice it just looks pretty I like things that look pretty I like my wife she's pretty
Okay. I'll do it on the other one too really quick. Just because it adds that nice little level of detail and uh, craftsmanship. So your assignment then now, just to reiterate it uh, and make sure we're clear, your assignment is to do a study and I want you to do two different animals, right? Do at least three drawings for each one. Um, that I mean, if you really wanna be good, it should probably be more like four, five, six, but um, you might be busy or whatever. So, you know, do whatever, do as many as you can. And this is an online course, so it's not like anyone's gonna be checking up on you, right? I can't tell you to, like, there's no grades or anything. Um, but if you wanna get better, the only way is to practice. So I'm not giving these assignments to like be your boss or your teacher. Um, I'm giving these assignments to like help you get better. So. Um, do two different animals, uh, do some studies and do three, at least three drawings of each one of them and then post it on the Facebook group so you can get some feedback. I'll try and give you feedback on what you can work on um, and yeah, you can see other people's work. It'll be awesome. So anyways, um, that's it for this lecture. I will see you guys in the next one and have a great day. Are you looking for even more content on how to become a digital artist? Then check out some of my online courses. There are over 50 hours of in-depth content, and they cover a range of topics from creature design to light and color, and from character design to digital painting. You'll gain access to a private Facebook group for students only, where you can stay motivated and get feedback on your work. Plus, I provide fully responsive support throughout all of my courses, and I offer a 100% no questions asked money back guarantee. So normally my courses range from $100 to $200, but subscribers can take any of them, anytime, any course, for only $12, and once you buy it, you own it for life. There's no time limits, no subscriptions, anything like that. So if you want to show your support and become a better artist in the process, then use the link in the description, or just use promo code YT discount on any of my courses. So appreciate you guys. Have a good one.